Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Since we have got participants from all parts of the world, I think I should say like this. Again, okay. and very warm welcome to our second web webinar of this series for 2021. I am Amrit Shuna, Director at the National Library of Maldives. I will be the host for today. Before we go further with the webinar, I would like to give a few housekeeping announcements. The duration of this session is one hour and this meeting is being recorded. And this meeting will be hosting in YouTube. All participants, uh, please mute your mics and off cameras during the presentation to avoid distractions. We will put a link in the chat to mark the attendance. Please fill the attendance before the end of this session. I hope I'm clear. Um, we will issue a certificate to those complete the evaluation form. The evaluation form will be posted in the chat box at the end of the presentation. Many thanks to Dr. Gina for all the kind help given to the National Library to make this webinar series to happen. Dr. Gina is an independent list researcher from Singapore. Today's webinar includes two presentations. We welcome two or three questions from the audience at the end of each presentation. Topic for today's webinar is library services for children and young adults inside from Norway and Russia. Our first presentation will be given by Joran Sista. She is a library director in a public library in San Sanford municipality on the west coast of Norway with 22,000 citizens and six libraries. As a library director, she is participated, uh, sorry, she is particularly interested in developing good public library services for smaller municipalities with special emphasis on children and young adults. Joran, um, Joran is particularly interested in developing library services and lip literary skills in local languages and literature in partnership with organization in community. She pr previously work, mm, worked as a reading motivator for a national reading organization for children and young adults. Uh, she has been active in the Norwegian Library Association and in the IFLA section for libraries, uh, libraries for children and young adults for eight years. Most recently, as the chair, most recently uh, uh, she present uh, she active as a chair. Without any further ado, I request Miss Joran to give the presentation. Over to Miss Joran. There, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Greetings, fellow librarians in the Maldives. Thank you so much to the National Library for the invitation. I am Jorun Sistad, a library director from Norway, and I'm chair in IFLA Libraries for Children and Young Adults section. I will speak about our library at the west coast of Norway programming in libraries, and the work we do in IFLA libraries for children and young adults. I hope you understand my English. I am not a native English speaker, and I will do my best. I live in 
Western Norway, by the fjords, close to the municipality Sundfjord, where I work as a library director. When I'm not working in libraries or talking about library development, read stories or poetry, I go hiking. The municipality Sundfjord constitutes a region of 22 square thousand square kilometers and have 22,000 inhabitants. We have a main library in Førde and five smaller branches. As a library director in a small public library, I work for good library services for young adults and children. And we give library services to the whole community, but with special emphasis on children. And we have, I have particular interest in developing services and literary skills in cooperation with schools and kindergarten. At our six libraries, we are seven, 11 librarians with all kinds of education. For the moment, we are just two employees that have full formal education as librarians. Other have other higher education as well, but in local history, literature, graphical design, agriculture, and mathematics. We also have assistance with less formal education. Why are you a librarian? Or why do you want to work in a library? Please write in the chat why you, you have done this choice. Why I am a librarian? I didn't have many books when I was growing up. My parents, they didn't read books, but I love to read from the moment I learned how to spell. From the age of seven, I went to our little public library on my own to borrow books two or three times a week. And that was my first inspiration for becoming a librarian and not the old retired teacher working in that small library branch. At high school, I had a teacher who saw my interest in the books, the literature, but also people. Because you can't work in a library if you are not interested in working with people because there are people that we serve. And that teacher, she gave me the application papers for the library education, and that was perfect for me. And I've loved my work as a library director for more than 30 years. An important part of my library life is doing voluntary work in the community, the region, national and international. And that gives me increased library expertise and great pleasure. Fagforbundet, a national organization that I'm an active member in, is advocating for the library because we want to take part in shaping a better society. And with it, of course, better library services. Through my membership, I got sponsored to work with library development, not just on a national level, but also on an international level in IFLA. And for the last years, I am chair, I've been chair in one of the sections today. IFLA and our section invite all of you to stay in touch, to interact with the section through our webpage, Facebook or YouTube, because IFLA need librarians with different expertises from all over the world, from Norway, from Russia, and even from the Maldives. So please, take the invitation from me and stay in touch. Short about our organization, Libraries for Children and Young Adult section. IFLA is the global voice of the library and information profession. And we have 24 members from 20 different countries from all regions in the world. We promote library services for children and young adults. We encourage the exchange of best practices, including library experiences, education, training, and research in all aspects of library services. We arrange satellite conferences, off-site meetings, we create guidelines, we cooperate with other organizations, we connect libraries who want to exchange views and experiences, 
and we highlight best practices and we lead various of programs uh, and we hope that even the Maldives would uh, stay in touch with us, especially in the project, the World to Picture Books, which is starting up with the third edition now. We also have system libraries and best practices YouTube playlists. And we are nominating body for the biggest literature prize for children in the world, ALMA, Astrilingwen Memorial Award. Each uh, each public library has, this was not, <laughs> so each public library has different community to serve and different priorities and user needs, but we all want to create best practices in our library and that's why our section have created IFLA guidelines for library services for children aged 0 to 18. These guidelines are not a set of rules for designing an ideal library service for children of all abilities but they suggest what might be feasible while being aware that there are a wide differences in social, cultural, economical circumstances in the world. I just want you to give a brief uh, look at the content. It's about mission and governance. It's about human resources, partnerships, collaboration, collection development, programming, community outreach, design of the space, how to create a welcoming space, marketing promotion, evolution and impact. And we hope that these guidelines will promote and encourage the development of effective library services for children and give guidance to the international library community about children's needs and rights to, on information and literacy and reading. So, if you are going to make a strategic plan for or deliver children's library services and programs, the revised guidelines will provide you with up-to-date knowledge and professional insight. We hope that these guidelines will be useful for practicing librarians, library staff, library managers, students, lecturers in library and information studies faculties. So, and if you are a library director, you can use the guidelines to inform your decision makers and those involved in developing services. And this information can also be used in benefit for non-governmental organization NGOs. In Athens 2019, I met Ava Shalkiadaki on the picture. She is a board member of the City of Athens Organization of Culture, Sport and Youth and coordinator of the Municipal Libraries Committee. I visit her library in the park for chill, child and culture. This library is Greece's first library dedicated to children age birth to six years and their families. Ava and her staff, library staff, according to IFLA guidelines, developed it for library services. Receiving support from IKEA, and the non-profit early literacy organization, the Avosontas Megalono, the beautiful library, now includes over 3,000 titles for young children, as well as programming space, play and feeding area for infants. Ava used the guidelines to inform and promote library services for children to the stakeholders, and she created a library that see visitors not just from Athens, but also from surrounding areas. But what does my day-to-day -day job look like? As the director for a small public library with six branches, no days looks alike. I love to see the children in the library, but there is also a lot of meetings to cooperate in projects, administration to get the salary out, pay the bills, to secure that we have staff in the libraries all time, and practical work with public services through, through phone, 
or in the library because we need to serve all inhabitants from zero to 100 years. The libraries in Sunfjord are traditional but active with lots of small visitors. Normally we have gaming equipment, programming and social events for children. But with COVID services is closed down. The kindergartens don't come to the library every week this year. We have social distance and children can just visit the library in smaller groups. But still we work close to primary schools. We support the schools creating and developing school libraries and three of our branches are combined school and public libraries to support the local community. And we have storytelling, book presentations, reading competitions and so on. And slowly, slowly, we are getting more back to normal. And we are now planning two big events for children June to August. It's a digital summer read campaign and a new summer school with reading and sports for 80 children aged 10 to 13 for four weeks in July and August. The summer school project is new to us and it's cooperation project with the government and is organized by the, the central municipality. Sommerles, which means summer read, is a national digital reading campaign organized by public libraries in Norway. The campaign runs yearly from June 1st to August 31st and is free for all children from first to seventh grade. The goal is to encourage an interest in reading and ensure that the children read as much as possible to a long summer vacation. By using elements from computer games, Summerless has become a popular vacation activity for so many children since it was first launched in Westfall County in 2014. Summerless are um, organized by two county libraries responsible for the competition and each county library is responsible for two years at a time because this responsibility requires a lot of resources, time, planning and logistics for those who participate in the project. And since it's a free program, all participating libraries and county libraries participate in sharing the costs because it's very important that it's completely free for all children. On the website, uh, Sommerlies, .no, the children can collect points for each page, page they read, do tasks connected to the reading, follow friends, see what they read, and they can earn digital trophies. They can earn small prizes that they can collect at the local library, library and they can follow a story written exclusively for this program. And last year, 125,000 children all over the country participated. We also collaborate with other NGOs for reading and also uh, the Norwegian Library of Talking Books and Braille. That's, that is important to create the best reading experience for as many children as possible. And it's also, the stories are also available in audiobook format and in our, in our two official forms of written Norwegian and Sami language. That's because we want the children to meet the literature, how they speak it. So why do I talk to you so much about this? Why is this project so important? The summer reading loss refers to the decline in reading development children experience over the school holidays. It is a challenge and well-documented phenomenon in research literature from US and Europe. Early studies from US show that weak readers can lose up to three months of reading development during the school holidays in summer. In practice, this indicates that the weak readers are returning to the level they were in March in reading development when they start school in August. Strong readers lose less reading skills over the vacation. And so the gap between 
the strong and the weak readers becomes reinforced. Fiora and Roman found following implications from the studies in US about summer reading program back in 2010. Students who participated in the public library summer reading program maintained an increased reading skills. More girls than boys participated in the programs. Recreational reading outside of school made a difference in improving the reading scores. And the public library was accessible to all students, no matter the socioeconomic status. And this research, which is over 10 years old, but it's still valid. And it shows some of the same results in practice in our library on the other side of the world and in a small municipality in Sundfjord, Norway. We also focus on our oldest users. Last month, I have learned 50 elderly people about social media and digital services in my library. Even if the elderly people ha now have the vaccine in Norway, the picture, I'm sorry to say, is from 2019. But there is more optimism towards digitalization and technology among elderly in Norway. They know that digitalization and technology, technology give them better opportunities in terms of participating in the society. In the pandemic, it has also been crucial for so many elderly and others to keep in contact with family and friends through social media. My mom, she is 90 years old. She is using Facebook and Instagram to stay in contact with the youngest in the family and friends when we couldn't visit her. And of course, she did it also for pleasure. The project is a cooperation with a voluntary local organization where they bring their computers and smartphones and learn together every week. They, the participants are from the early 70s to the late 80s. And it's great to show these very nice and new digital users how to use our services. We learn them about our library system, how to read ebooks, digital newspapers, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and so on. Through the pandemic, we have tried to continue with the work, creating a meeting place, presenting great literature with digital services. But like, I guess that same in the Maldives, we in Norway closed down March 12th with all the rest of the country. But even just 14 days after closed down, we started with uh, giving takeaway services. And the first week in May, we had could open the doors in the libraries for the public again. Of course, with extra focus on good hygiene and less people in the library. We had to stop our programming and the saddest development is that we feel that we kind of lost the library as a meeting place in the pandemic. We went digital, like libraries all over the world. We created digital story times and we landed more ebooks. As you see of the picture, we also created a traffic light solution where green indicates what you can do when there are less COVID in the community and red when we have outbreaks of COVID, more COVID. And I live in a small part of the world, but even us had a red um, period last month and we had to use face masks in the library for the first time in, under the pandemic. But for the moment, yellow, is the new normal for us <clears throat> with reduced services and more distance. I'm sorry that everything is in Norwegian, but I think that this kind of give you an understanding about how it's more easy when you have colors. So when people come into the library, they can see the colors. And now what's, uh, what's allowed and not. But there are not so bad anyhow. We got the numbers for library use in my municipality last month. Even we have had almost taken away almost all the chairs in the libraries. We have 
we have been closed for more than a month, no physical programming, and even struggling with funding of our services. We had just a minor reduction in lending and visitors last year. People love their libraries. You see, can see that in, in 2019, we had 103,000, 100,000 visits. And in 2020, with the pandemic, we had over 100,000 visitors. The physical loans with re revenueable in that was 90,000 and about approximately 3,000 ebooks. And in last year, it was not, the reduction was not very big to 88, almost 89,000 physical loans and almost 5,000 ebooks. And this is uh, for six collections with all was together than approximate 60,000 media. From my small traditional library, I wanted so my, much to take you to a short visit to some of the modern libraries in Norway for the moment, in our capital Oslo. I think that Oslo is the library capital in the world. Sorry, Maria, but this is true. <laughs> and, um, but it's not possible to travel for the moment. Um, in the presentation, I will also put in the, in the chat, there will be two links with uh, two videos that I want you to go into afterwards to take a glimpse into those, especially two magical uh, libraries that's in Oslo. And that's Dijkman Bjarvika, Norway's biggest bookshelf with 450,000 books, six floors, 150,000 square feet with all playful hiding places for children, technology, knowledge in all forms, and a little magic room on the top with a unique art project, the future library, it's magic. And of course, Bibliotherian with, that's just open for children. And um, it's placed in an area where there are very low income families living and it's magic and it's great and it's free and it's lovely. So please take a look at these libraries after your meeting. Well, I think I got over my time. <laughs> I hope that this gave you a short glimpse into my world, my libraries, what I work with, and I hope that we can stay in contact. Please feel free to contact me if you want to learn more about our library services in Norway or IFLA section libraries for children and young adults. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joran, for the insightful information. We are very excited to see the see Oslo libraries. <laughs> yeah. Um, any questions for Ms. Joran? Now the floor is open for participants for questions. I really like the uh, the phrase that you said, uh, working with people. Mm. Yes, librarians, we need to work with people, right? <laughs> yes, I think that's kind of misunderstood, but you, you want to work in library. Oh, you can't work in the library and sit in a chair and read books mm. <laughs> because it's, it's the people that you, are, uh, that you need to give the services. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, how, uh, how did you manage the takeaway service in the library? Oh, that was organized like um, you saw in the picture, like uh, people were ordering the books online on, or on phone. So we uh -huh. did all the lending procedure inside the library and it was kind of in plastic bags, not so good for the uh -huh. environment, but... <laughs> <laughs> plastic bags outside the library and the learners come and pick them up. Oh, just like the uh, normal takeover service, right? Yes, it's what it's like. <laughs> Not hamburgers, but books. But books. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our uh, next pres uh, presenter is Miss Mar Maria Alakseva uh, from Russia. She's the head of the International Relations uh, Department of the Russian State. Russian State Library for Young Adults. Um, adults counts over 10, uh, 10 years with the library, which is decide, uh, dedicated specially for readers aged 16 to 30. As head of international relations, uh, relations she lies, uh, liaises with foreign libraries, library associations, and library special uh, specialists on international projects targeted at young users. Some projects she has uh, coordinated includes the book patchwork project, a special foreign language collection of fiction for young adults, the Library Planet project uh, to showcase the best modern libraries from different uh, countries, and uh, 365 days in the library, the, the photo project about everyday library of Russia and Swedish libraries, a, coll a collaboration with IFLA sister libraries. She has authored several publications and has spoken at various international professional events. She is a member of the standard committee of the section on international relations and relations of the Russian Library Association and IFLA section for children, for children, children and young adults. Let's welcome Miss Maria. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for this wonderful <laughs> introducing. I'll share my screen first and then we, we will start. Just first, yes, this one first. Hello, hello everyone. It's uh, an honor and pleasure for me to take part in today's webinar with library and information specialists of Maldives. It's amazing to meet even virtually and talk with library specialists from another part of the world. Huge thank you to Dr. Gina de Alvis for invitation and the National Library of Maldives for this great chance. Uh, my today's presentation will have two parts. The first one will be about my li our library, its mission and my principles uh, of working for and with young people, what special services we author offer for them. In the second part, I'd like to tell you briefly about uh, my personal career path, my main responsibilities as international relations specialist, and of course about our international projects, which are open to new partners. So the Russian State Library for Young Adults is located in Russia, uh, in Moscow, in one of the city districts not far from the downtown. It was founded in 1966 as a young adult branch of the State Public Historical Library. In 2009, it was opened uh, to users after total renovation and reconstruction. So today it is one of the eight federal level libraries and the main one dedicated and designed especially for young adults in Russia. Uh, the library's doors are open for all people, for all ages, uh, registered users and non-users alike, but our target group are young people from uh, 16 till 30 or even 35. It is essential to mention that in Russia we have children's libraries network and young adult libraries network, uh, which consists of 56 libraries of different levels. Being the main library for the whole network, our library acts as informational, educational and consulting center of all young adult libraries, as well as other public libraries working with young users. So uh, 
first, let's start with some statistics. Here you can see general data of our collection, number of registered users, visitors per day, and events per month. Speaking about visitors and events, that's how it was before the pandemic. In recent months, uh, these numbers are, of course, a bit lower. It's uh, 40, 50 events per month and uh, 600 visitors per day at the moment. So we, during the pandemic, we were um, closed. Then we opened last summer and then closed again. And from February, we are working in an ordinary, in a ordinary order. So we see these positive dynamics in events and uh, visitors. So we hope to reach our ordinary numbers soon. Uh, while implementing new services, resources, designing library space, training our librarians, we always ask ourselves, how can a library be helpful for today's young people and people in general? So we see it in our view, a library is a house of knowledge and guarantee of free access to information with an opportunity to learn how to work with information. A library is a helper in social, professional, legal, and psychological adaptation to living in today's life. Um, that it is a place of intellectual leisure and communication. It's an environment for realization of abilities, talents, and social ambitions. And of course, it's a place where people always want to come. Uh, next slide shows basic principles of successful work uh, with users as we see it. So first one is orientation towards wide spectrum of interests and personal needs of people directly or indirectly related to obtaining new knowledge and acquiring skills needed in today's society. Next one is working not for users, but together with them. It's, it's like an idea of co-creation, cooperation, co-creation. And the third, the third one, perception of a library as a space of opportunities. Uh, the Young Adult Library is a library of opportunities. This is our motto, and it was formulated uh, by our young users, actually. Based on this mission, the 4S concept uh, was created. 4S. It is a main concept which works for all young readers of, of the library. Uh, the idea of this concept is that a library has to facilitate self-education, self-understanding, self-identification, and self-fulfillment. All of these four S provide patterns with extra opportunities for social interaction and upward mobility which appear thanks to the library. To fit all these points outside of books and other printed and digital resources, our library offers uh, to our users, of course, the latest digital technologies. Uh, our library is one of the most advanced libraries in the country in terms of implementation of uh, modern digital technologies and means of remote communication with users and with other libraries. It, it has become super uh, useful and super needed during the pandemic. And we were lucky and we were happy to be, um, to be prepared actually for, for all these calls of the pandemic. Um, uh, then uh, we, even before the pandemic, we hosted lots of webinars from our video studio. Uh, it was um, it's especially for uh, library specialists across across Russia. And during the pandemic, it that was the the main place at the library because all our online all our events for users they moved online, and they were from this video studio, all streamings on online, all online events. Then we have 
uh, of course, we think that it's easier to communicate with young people using those technologies and de mobile devices that they are used to. So we have our electronic library card and a telegram bot uh, for communication, for connection. And it was al also super, super useful during the pandemic in, and while the library was closed, but they can, they could uh, order books uh, for takeout, um, see our online events and so on. Then we have virtual concert hall. It is uh, designed for streaming concerts, theater performances and festivals. It, it is supported by the Ministry of Culture of the Russian Federation. And um, it is connected with the website. Uh, it's the national website for all cultural institutions, libraries, museums, uh, theaters. It is called culture.ru. And during the pandemic, all online events uh, from those institu cultural institutions you could find uh, on this website. Um, we have lots of exhibitions in our library and uh, we use uh, te technologies of augmented reality for our exhibitions. Uh, but besides technologies, uh, we Mm, have special areas and facilities for our young users, such as rare books room. It, it is a place for intellectual conversation, discussions, and development of critical thinking. And of course, here uh, our users can mm, can see rare books, old books, and they can touch it. And it's so important for them just to uh, not only see them but also have a chance to look through them. Then we have Record Studio. It is designed for improving mus musical and artistic skills and interests. Uh, Media Lab, it's like a maker space. It's a space for realization of science tech projects and working with new technologies like 3D printer, 3D scanner and lots of uh, other <laughs> things. Artist Studio is a combination of knowledge and creative activities for everyone who wants to know more about uh, arts uh, or who would like to um, to create some something by uh, by himself. So as you can see, all these special facilities, special spaces, are about this idea of self education, self. Uh, self-development. Um, then I'd like to tell briefly about how our library works with users with special needs. I think the issue of inclusion, equal access to information and services, diversity are key issues for libraries wherever they are located now. Our library has been working on inclusion, accessible environment, equal opportunities for young users with special needs for more than 10 years. Uh, it is essential part of our activities and programs. Our library ensures the availability of physical space and friendly atmosphere, provides services on a regular basis in accordance with preferences and needs of young users with special needs. Uh, I, today, I'd like to tell you about two cases that were uh, implemented even during the pandemic. So the first one uh, happened in December. Our library with the partners hosted the Festival of Inclusive Online Events called Friendly Library. Its main uh, aim was to tell the society as much as possible about the life of people with special needs to create a space for them, for their active participation, to introduce successful young people who have achieved their goals and to inspire and motivate their peers. 10 online events of, the, of uh, this festival have got about uh, 2,050, uh, uh, 200, sorry, 250,000 views on various social media platforms. Another one, 
took place recently in April. So our library held a series of events called ASD Growing Up Together, dedicated to the World Autism Awareness Day. The two-day program was divided in two parts. On the first day, there was an international seminar for the professional community uh, with the participation of Russian and foreign specialists from Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Sweden, United States, and Germany, dedicated to the topic of inclusive projects and services for users with uh, autism in libraries. On the second day, educational events were held for families with children with autism and for everyone interested in this topic. All materials of the international seminar in English are available on our website. I will share the link uh, in the end of my presentation. Uh, well, nowadays libraries are changing in response to different external calls. It has become even more obvious during the pandemic, I think. And it means that functional capabilities, job responsibilities, and competencies of library specialists are changing as well. That's why we can see representatives of different professions among library staff more often nowadays. I think this is true for libraries in any part of the world. For example, among uh, 120 staff members of our library, uh, I put here uh, the picture of um, my colleagues. It was uh, taken uh, in 2016. We had our 50th anniversary of our library. So among our staff members, we have Besides the librarians, of course, there are specialists in sociology, marketing, public relations, information technology, project management, and even design. However, librarians are still case staff members. In Russia, a librarian can be either a specialist uh, with special education, special library education, or a person with a higher, preferably humanitarian education. Many universities in our country train library and information specialists. Some of them regularly undergo internship programs in our library. As our library is also an educational center for librarians working with young users, we offer various continuing learning programs and series of seminars, both offline and online. Besides, in 2018, director of our library, Ms. Irina Mikhnova, and head of the information and technology department, Mr. Anton Pulnik, published the practical guide called Effective Library, how to design a library and make it needed for people. You can see the, the photo of this book uh, on this slide. In the same year, this book was awarded as the best professional book of the year of the Russian Library Association. And since then, it has become a handbook for many librarians and library directors in our country. So, well, I, I think now it's time to move on the second part uh, of my presentation and tell you briefly about how I found myself in the library, what are my responsibilities, and what are our current international projects that are open to new partners and participants. Uh, as I always like to say, my career at the library happened by chance. I don't have a special library education. I have a degree in, in uh, history and theory of culture. Uh, after graduating from my university, I was looking for a job, sending my CV in different cultural institutions, museums, galleries, going for interviews. And one day, my grandma advised me to send my CV to the library for young adults, not far from my home, which had just opened after a massive renovation. I did so, and I got an answer from the director with invitation for the interview. And to be honest, I was so impressed with the library itself, amazing friendly atmosphere there. And of course, with so energetic and enthusiastic people working there. All my stereotypes about libraries have been broken at very, that, that very moment. I immediately accepted the offer to join the International Relations Department, which had just formed. 
So after almost uh, 12 years working at my library, I can say without doubt that I have become a huge fan, advocate, and promoter of today's libraries, their mission, their activities, and services for users. So what are responsibilities of international relations specialists at our library? Uh, first one, and most obvious, it's communicating with foreign partners of our library. It's something that happened on a regular basis, every day. Then, representing our library, and I'd say all Russian libraries working with young users at various international professional events and organizations. Uh, I am a standing committee member of ITLA section libraries for children and young adults. Our library joined those section uh, in two, uh, 2011, and it's a huge part of our work and our activities uh, working uh, within uh, IFLA and uh, this amazing, wonderful section. Uh, next one. Uh, is informing Russian specialists about current trends and best practices in serving young users in foreign libraries. This task tasks, uh, is accomplished by translating and publishing of foreign research articles, interviews from different countries in, in the monthly online newspaper of our library called Territory L, Territory Library. And of course, um, together with my colleagues, implementing international library projects aimed at young users. I show here only some of them. So the latest one happened right before the pandemic. That was the exhibition called Ring Nova, Russia in Graphic Novels and Animation. It was implemented together with our long-term partner, the National Library for Children and Young Adults of South Korea. This is a unique ex uh, exhibition which gives a cultural and historical overview of the Russian world through graphic novels and animation. Uh, I really like this, uh, the idea of this exhibition and implementation of it, and I think it can be um, hosted by other libraries. Then it is uh, another our ongoing project of our library. It is a special collection of young adult books from different countries called Book Patchwork. It is connected with the idea of book exchange with libraries we visit or with our long-term partners. So at the moment, this collection includes over 280 books from 24 countries. And one more project we are proud of is called Library Planet. It is a collection of videos from public libraries worldwide who are successfully working with young users. So two of my colleagues visited libraries, talked with librarians, specialists working uh, with young users, uh, with, uh, speaking with young users also, and made short uh, videos about them. The main goal of, it, of this project is to show librarians and readers the best practices from different countries, various libraries, how they work with their communities, what resources and opportunities they give. So now the project has 18 um, videos from eight countries. And we have a wonderful video from those uh, library for children, Bibliotoyen, if I'm not <laughs> mistaken, uh, from Norway. So I will have a link in the end of my presentation. So uh, I think it's time for final ideas. And I think working at the library is one of the best jobs because of the special social mission of the library. You feel that you are doing something meaningful, something important, not only for yourself or your career, but for others. You help people to get access to information, knowledge, give them everything they need to educate themselves, develop their skills, fulfill their ambitions. One more idea. Nowadays, libraries play an important role for their local communities. And I really like that today you had a chance to hear about two different libraries.
from two countries, two very different libraries, but both have much in common and are essential to their users of all ages. It means no matter whether you're a big or small library, a national, state, or rural, no matter what your budget is, you can be a key place for your, for your own community. And the last but not least one, to keep this position, it is important for libra libraries and librarians to be flexible, adapt to external changes and calls, be open to new knowledge and skills. The pandemic has highlighted it and made obvious the idea of the ongoing learning and getting new competencies. So this is my final slide with some useful links to our resources in English. I can put them all to the chat right now for your convenience. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. You are welcome with your questions now or later via email. Uh, our library is always open to new international collaborations and we would like to learn more uh, how libraries of Maldives work with young users. So I wish you all the very, the very best for your current and future work. And thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Maria. Thank you very much for this exciting presentation. We knew uh, we, it's very educational for us because we know a lot, lot about what you are doing. Yeah, thank you. Any it's questions? a pleasure for me. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, I'm really excited about the Ring Nova, to know more about Ring Nova. So, um, how did you manage to do it at the beginning? Uh, so, uh, here in our library, we work with comics and visual um, graphic novels and uh, all this visual content for many years, for 10 years. And we have a special um, department mm -hmm. works with comics. And our uh, colleagues in, from South Korea, of course, uh, the culture of comics and graphic novels is super... Uh, super big uh, for them as well. That's why we decided we choose, we have chosen for the exhibition, we have chosen uh, that um, that topic and that con content. So it was, I think that was the, the right choice. And we discussed uh, with our partners uh, how we can um, arrange it uh, and adding uh, augmented reality. So we had uh, some the uh, the design we designed it uh, together so yeah it was a huge a huge work but uh, yeah. the result was amazing <laughs> i think yeah thank you very much any questions uh, um, we have put up the evaluation uh, evaluation forms for participants please do fill uh, for those who fill the forms, we'll be issuing the certificate e certificate. And the useful links are Miss uh, Maria and Miss Joran have put up the useful links in the chat. So please uh, later on, please go uh, go and check those links. Well, if there's no question, we can wrap up here. <laughs> Thank you uh, once again. Uh, now this is the very end of the webinar. Thank you, audience. Once again, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Gina for making this webinar to happen. And many more thanks to the both very knowledgeable and super presenters, Ms. Jor Joran and Ms. Maria. Yeah, have a good day. Be safe. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Hope to see you all soon <laughs> once again. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.